So today I'm going to show you how to get the gospel sound in terms of harmonies with your chords and most importantly I'm showing you the the voicings of the harmonies or in other words the space between the individual notes as that's one of the key things for achieving the gospel sound. I'm going to do this in the key of E flats. I'm assuming at this point you're aware of numbers so if not there are other videos that you can quickly brush up on for that. So if we're in the key of E flat and basically I'm going to do a walk down from the 1 to the 6 so E flat to C and then a typical 2 5 1. So that's what we'll do today. So the chord I'm going to use for this walk down is that's the important bit it will be an E flat 9 chord so spelling that out in its basic form E flat G, B flat, D flat, and the F. So I've just stacked it from the root. And I'll work that down. So it sounds like that. But this is not the typical way you do it in gospel music. So you have to uh, change the voicings. In other words, splitting the harmony. Uh, but just to go into a bit more detail about what that is, if I pick C for example and I want to play a C chord of some sort and I have a C next to a D, then what I have there is, is uh, an interval of a second or secondo harmony as it's called. So from a C to a G, you get that cluster sound. If I have it in thirds then that's more like the normal stack of a C major chord. So now I have a distance of a third. If I go to fourths, then I now have a wider sound. But the important thing about this is that you can now hear the, the difference between the different notes more clearly because there's a gap of a fourth or more. So in making it open, it actually allows more room for those individual harmonies to do different things of their own for example. So that's the importance of having clustered chords versus open chords and in gospel we do a whole mixture of that. So back to the example E flat 9. So the way how you can play this for gospel uh, music would be keeping the roots and the third but instead of playing the fifth we'll skip over that for now. Dominant 7 then I have the 9 here and I put the 5th at the top. So now you end up with this sound. And it sounds like a much more open chord which is typical of, of the gospel chords. And just showing you parts of that, if I look at these two harmonies here, I've got, uh, going back to the beginning of it, you've got a distance of a tritone here. So it's much greater than a 3rd or even a 4th. G and D flat. So I've got a third here between these two, but then there's a fourth here between the F and the B flat. So you got that open sound, which is great for gospel music, and it allows you to then play around with these individual notes. So let's say as I come down a semitone, rather than go into this, which is a D F sharp C. E and A, I'm going to do a typical gospel move here where I'm using grace notes. So I don't just go straight to the target note, I start a tone below and work my way up. Like that. So now it sounds more like how you would hear it on the gospel records or in churches up and down uh, the, the country. Okay, so that's one inversion. Let's look at another one which is a favourite of mine uh, and again I'll start from the beginning so I'll avoid the, the root, I'll start with the third, then the dominant seventh, so I've got a tritone here gap and the ninth I've put here, the fifth and the root I've got at the top so it's quite a, a large space between each harmony. So this could be considered a rootless voicing because the bass is not at the bottom but I'm still moving 
written down as nine chords in terms of the, the actual chord name. So I'll apply that same principle with the grace notes, but now because I'm here, I will go. You know, it's it's the harmony that's not at the highest point now. It's now the second highest harmony that does it. And so hopefully that's explained to you the difference between having uh, just a simple stack of what it would be, the E flat nine, uh, versus how we've transformed it using open voicings to get that sound. If you like this video, by all means, uh, give me a thumbs up. Any questions, yeah, let me know and I'll explain the best way I can. And yeah, look out for more as I'll be sticking a lot more up on here and also my website as well.